So in this video, I want to talk about the relationship between Bell and Eyes. And in the recent episodes of Darmachi, and of course, don't worry, there will be no spoilers in this video, but in the recent episodes, you get to see a bit more of an idea of the connection that Bell and Eyes have. And one of the things that I really love about Hestia here is her going up to Eyes and saying, hey, stay away from Bell. And she's not saying that as a like a vicious thing or trying to be mean, but she understands that if Bell runs into Eyes, it's going to shatter him. That's her perspective. Now, of course, I know what happens in the future, so I just want to be very clear there because, you know, some people are going to be like, well, actually, yes, there are no spoilers in this, but we're talking about this component here of that relationship is that Hestia understands how much Bell cares and looks up to eyes and for him to bump into her and that idea in her head of her saying who are you or oh you're that guy that's part of Freya Familiars and them kind of being very cold and distant would absolutely shatter Bell because you remember Bell has all his memories of his real life and it's all been mixed in with this fake life that's been fed to him by the Freya familiar members and Freya herself. Now, of course, we can get into the whole Freya evil, blah, 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 blah. But as I mentioned in the last video, Freya is one of those characters that is far more complex than some one-dimensional character. And I do feel like the anime is not going to fully portray her feelings. And even in the light novels, a lot of dumb Archie fans do not understand her because they kind of, they dumb things down. And that is something that I've seen throughout my journey as a content creator, analyzing things is when you look at villains and you look at characters that are not picture perfect, people try to dumb down those bad decisions. It doesn't mean that I'm justifying them or dim diminishing them. I'm simply pointing out that People do bad things for a reason, and there's a lot more complexities to individuals. And that's the thing I like about a lot of these stories, is the human element of things. People do dumb things for a reason, sadly. And even though some people will say, oh no, you can just be like evil and want things, and like, no, th there's a reason. And they say, oh, well, maybe they just want to watch the world burn. But that is a reason in itself. That's not just pure evil mean evil. That's them getting joy out of something. So there is a reason behind it. And in Freya's case, she is desperate. She is lonely. She's trying to cling on to that potential of actually having a meaningful relationship with someone, even if really at the end of the day, it's like watching a flower sort of wither away because she is a goddess. She is going to live forever and Belle will at some point die. And so to her, love is something very different. And I mentioned that in the past video, so I'm not going to go into that again. If you want my deeper analysis on Freya as a character and why she is misunderstood, check out my other videos because I go into much more detail. And I will potentially go into more of that once the future episodes are out. But the relationship between Eyes and Belle is just such a good relationship because they do have a very deep connection to each other. And even though Eyes in the anime doesn't really show much of her emotions, in the light novels, which is much more better at portraying even than the side story light novels, it has a better job at kind of giving context to her villains. There is, you know, a person there that has her own dreams, her own past, her own trauma as well. And that's another thing about Eyes is that she has gone through some pretty messed up things and horrific things. And so there is a reason why she is the way that she is, the reason why she is driven to be as powerful as that she is. And that is something that Belle looks up to, is that drive. Belle wants to be by her side as an equal before he can confess his feelings. And that's one of the things I think some people don't understand, is that Belle will confess his feelings once he has at that point where he is equal to her. And he sees himself as equal. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, he isn't equal already. It depends if you you look at it just from, like, people in, in itself. Like, oh, you know, he's an equal, you know, he's just an adventurer like her. But he looks at it as she is a, on a whole different pedestal as far as level goes, as prestige, as uh, fame. He wants to get to a point where he can stand side by side by her and then confess his feelings. And Hestia understands that as much as she definitely is a bit of a fawn in the side and I think the reason why she acts in the way that she does is she's overly caring she's overly smothering at times but I also do feel like the writer kind of puts it in there deliberately to kind of roadblock Belle and I don't think it really fits Hestia's character 
so well that she's constantly getting in Belle's way. But I think the reason why it's done like that is to slow Belle down from actually being able to confess. It's, it's, it's those speed bumps, like I said before. Because it would feel kind of weird that it'd be like, okay, if there's no speed bumps, then why hasn't Belle confessed? Like, that's that's something that I get in my comments quite a lot, is people being like, hey, why hasn't he confessed already? Well, he should already confess. But if you understand his personal goals and how he sees the world and how he sees eyes, He's too petrified to approach her because he sees her as well above him. He kind of beats himself down a lot and he kind of, and I think at the same time, I think he's also humble. He doesn't see himself as some hot shot and especially with how fast he's leveled, he could definitely get a bit of an ego if he wanted to. There's definitely a lot of motives and reasons for him to get an ego. He is leveled at an astronomically fast rate, faster than eyes. So of all people to get a bit of a chip on their shoulder, it would be Belle, but he's not. He sees himself as just an adventurer trying to race against a shadow, which is Isa's. And so he's trying to catch that. He doesn't care about the fame. He doesn't care about the glory. At the end of the day, he just wants to be by her side. And that's why I think their relationship is so heartwarming in itself, because Belle is just purely driven by his desire to be by her side. And I also think Eyes does have an interest in Belle at this point in the story. You can definitely see those hints, even in the anime. Even in the anime, especially with its faults, where it sometimes cuts out a lot of the context, you can see that Eyes has a deep connection with him, but she doesn't know how to articulate or get her feelings across. And she is one of those that is a little bit... She struggles to get her feelings out because, again, of those past issues. And I feel like as time goes on and as she is able to overcome those issues that she's had from her past, she will be able to understand her own feelings better and that will allow her to finally understand that she is, in fact, in love with Belle as well. And I do wonder if Belle will be the one that will help her. I think it will be a little bit of Belle, I think it'll be a little bit of the Loki familiars, and I think it'll be a little bit of her own self-discovery that will allow her to be able to overcome those issues and connect with Belle more. As far as Hestia goes, Hestia is one of those characters that I feel like she will end up supporting Belle in the long term when it comes to his decision to be with her or eyes, but she is one of those currently being more of a fawn in the side as I said, speed bump. And I don't mean that in a negative aspect. I've seen some people say, oh, you're just hating on Hesse. No, no, absolutely not. But I understand also the writer has put certain things in place in the story to try and steer it in a certain direction. And sometimes it can feel a little bit artificial. It's kind of like seeing those speed bumps and you're like, okay, I, I, you see why the authors put them there. But sometimes you're kind of like, hmm, it doesn't feel natural. And that's why I feel like Hesse as a character being the way that she is, does at some points not feel natural. But in these particular moments when she says to Eyes, hey, stay away from Belle, that in itself is a really good moment because it then shows her truly caring moment that she understands how much it would hurt Belle, how much it would shatter his heart to see Eyes the way that she is. Now the question is for anime only fans, what would happen if they do meet? Again, no spoilers in the comment section. And of course, I've been keeping things spoiler free on the video, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of their relationship, Eyes and Belle, from an anime's only perspective and from a light novel's only perspective? So if you're a light novel reader, I'd like to know your thoughts about their relationship, spoiler free. And of course, anime only's what you think of their relationship, because I do feel like you get a very different perspective between the light novel and the anime. And a lot of that just has to do with the fact that JC staff, or the studio itself, behind Darmachi, I think it's JC staff, really favor Hestia, and I get why. She she is great marketing material. Those little lumps bouncing, defying physics, is definitely one of those where I feel like it's a great marketing tool, but it also sometimes confuses anime-only fans in understanding why the story is going in the direction that it's going. And there are some characters in this story that are so interesting and so complex as well but kind of get overshadowed because of the anime itself. And one of the videos that I do want to make in the future, and I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below, is the idea of grooming. And this whole idea that, yeah, Freya is grooming Belle, but I also think only focusing on her and saying she's the only one that's doing it when there's a little bit more to it on a grander scale. So I'd love to talk about that in a future video. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.